Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hey, Mr. Farmer. You're looking ravishing. You look nice. Did you, when did you grow that beard? Oh, about 30 minutes ago. Really? That's yeah, amazing. I thought, you know, the winter time is here. <laughs> you know, it is getting cooler. It's nice today. It's it's the bugs are less. Don't you think the girls are happy the flies aren't around? They their are, aren't they the sweet? Time? It's been the worst year for bugs, yes, flies, it has. critters, everything. But Sometimes we forget how much fun it is for other folks to see the natural things that go on around the farm. So right. I thought, you know, people have been saying, what's going on with the animals? Well, here's Millie and Maggie. Girls are on this side. That's right. Moses is on that side. There's a reason for that. We don't need puppies right That's now, right. girls. <laughs> but we do want lambs. That's right. High Country's on this side, the girls are on that side. He's been checking the girls out. They have been talking. They have. had a long distance relationship for the last Couple weeks. week or so. Yeah. And they seem to like each other. I think so. So today is the day where we're going to open the gate. <laughs> See what happens? See where everybody runs? This is chaotic. And usually what happens, the dogs, they can't stand it when the gate is open. They've right. got to go to the other side. See what's over So there. we hope the girls go over there. We hope High Country <laughs> goes over there with the girls and Moses comes over right. here. And Milty do whatever he wants. He just hangs Milty, out. Milty, he can hang. Yeah. So I can't guarantee you anything. This Kelly's could be on terrible. a wide shot over here. It could be bad. We're going to open the <laughs> gate and just see what happens. Right now, everybody's on the fence line. That's right. Now, the one reason I don't want Moses with high country is because they've not been that acquainted. Right. He's not too good with new animals. Yeah. So he'll protect anybody that's been out there for a long time, but I don't want him with a new animal. Right. So, you want to just open the gate? Let's see what happens. See what happens? Okay. All right, here we go. Come on, Meg. All right, so I'm rounding up. I've got behind high country, and Nikki's going to open the gate. Well, things went absolutely not according to plan. But it worked out. But it, it did worked work out. out. It always does. It, usually does. Yeah, it does. it always works the out. The dogs can't stand it. If they've been on one side, they right. want to be on the other. Now, some people may have a different style when they do these <laughs> things, but we have our own style and it works for us. Now the girls are over here. Now, we know the right now he's with Mama Mia. That's right. She loves him much. Yes. She loves her much. That's right. So she's going to be the one we're watching first. For because, babies. Because when it rolls around March time, we're mm -hmm. going to be thinking about babies. Now Moses is the oldest boy. Mm -hmm. He's been around here for what, six years? Going yeah. on seven? Yeah. But he is such a good boy. He, he does such good a good job. So that's just a brief look at what's going on around the farm. That's right. Nothing exciting. Next week we might show you what's going on with Junior. Okay. What's going on with Maybell and Holly. Mm-hmm. Holly girl. She's looking awful pretty. She's she getting a winter coat. She is. All right. Speaking of winter coat, we've got him on. It's nice it's out. It's nice. How about let's build a fire and start some cooking? Okay. You hungry? Uh -huh. I'm always hungry. Right. So it's finally happened, Mrs. Farmer. Mm -hmm. the temperatures have dropped. We actually had frost though this morning. That was just a heavy frost. I wasn't ready for that. The fire feels good. Yes, it does. We're not finally. running from the fire and sweating from the fire. We've got fire all around us. I like fire tonight. Nice. Now we actually love to cook outdoors when we can. That's right. When it's not raining, cameras mm -hmm. don't like the rain very much. When there's much. no snow, I like this. Absolutely lovely evening out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like 40 degrees tonight. Frosted, like you talked yeah, about earlier. That was unreal. I didn't unreal. even get my plants in yet. I'm going to have to watch it. But maybe it'll kill the ragweed. There you go. But it is fall. What does that mean? Well, it means that we got a dress warmer. That's right. It's getting cold. I had to put my glove on. You know, this is the time to address this. Every now and then, I know I'm a huge number of folks that are asking, what's the matter with your arm? Mm -hmm. What's the matter with your hand? Why do you wear a glove on your hand? So on and so forth. And I have been wearing one here lately, but I have now because I have it's a cold. nerve condition in my arm called RSD. Mm -hmm. It's due to a horrific motorcycle accident I had 30 some years ago when I was a young Marine. And it just about took me out. So what happens when you have a catastrophic injury and you're in your early 20s and you have your life all planned out? Well, it gets pretty strange pretty quick. Right. I remember being in Walter Reed Hospital, you know, what am I going to do with my life now? Mm -hmm. 
You know, I, I, I remember walking up with a tray to get some food, loaded my plate up, all the plates slid over and crashed to the floor. I thought, wow, my life is really gonna change because I didn't have any use from my that elbow down of this arm. So hey, you know what I did? I went home, gathered up the pieces of my life and started doing the things that I always done. I hunted and fished, mm -hmm. figured out how to reel with my teeth, figured out how to shoot a bow. You did, and you're pretty good. <laughs> I loved it so much that my next door neighbor, who was a game warden, says, hey, you know what you ought to do? As much as you like to hunt and fish, he'd see me carrying squirrels right. and so on and so forth. He said, you ought to go take a test in Frankfurt for fisheries biologist. I was in That's school right. studying biology, took the test, mm -hmm. got the job, and there you go. Next thing you know. All kinds of friends, all kinds of fun. <laughs> all kinds of fun. My, my gig, man. That's right. And so I started shooting a bow with my teeth. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I started winning tournaments against able-bodied archers. Next thing you know, I found myself in the position to host the oldest outdoor television show in the nation, Kentucky Field. Yeah. And here's what I love about fall. Look right here. Jimmy. That's venison. That's right. That is a fresh backstrap. Actually, that's last year's. Here's the deer yes. that I took last year during gun season. But I thought that was gone. I thought we already ate it. We you found saw, it in the yeah. freezer. Yeah, you were excited. Yay. So anyhow, it's the time of the year that I always look forward to, not so much to hunt horns, but to hunt For meat. that right there, the best meat in the world. Right. And Raul, the old French chef, he really impressed me how important it was to, to be able to have the resources to do this. Here's some footage of me actually taking some deer with my teeth when I was the host of Kentucky Field, the oldest outdoor television show in the nation. We won several Emmys while we were over there. Don't tell anybody. I'm not right, I won't. I won't but tell anybody. Great crew, tell great anybody. staff, a whole lot of fun. And here's some footage of how we take deer. So anyway, that's for the folks who are coming on board and ask questions on YouTube right. in different places. And they, 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 they say, what happened, what happened, what happened? We'll keep this little part as a segment. Mm -hmm. We'll pop up there again, what happened to Tim's arm? Right. And every now and then we'll address it because we are getting a lot of new viewers and, and we like that. But nothing stops you though. Nothing stops you. me except right. the really when it really gets cold. That's right. Then I gotta bundle up. <laughs> now as a responsible sportsman, I thought it's very important to show how to process a deer and yeah. then how to cook it and use mm -hmm. recipes. Some people don't necessarily like the taste of venison. They think it's strong. I like it, especially a backstrap. It has hardly any gamey flavor. And if you do it yourself and take off all the, what's it, silver seam, I think that makes a difference too. You're exactly right. right. And if you process your deer yourself. in a timely fashion, mm -hmm. I don't believe in hanging it up for very long. That's my idea. When we do it ourselves, I think people can't tell it's deer. Yeah. It's that, As it's delicious. We, we talked to Kelly into liking That's it. That's right. We snuck some in on her. <laughs> So many people ask for a marinade. Here's mm -hmm. a really good one. It's fall. We talk about apple cider. Right. This is an apple cider marinade. Now, what does apple cider do? It starts to break that meat down. It starts mm -hmm. to tenderize it. It's a little sweet. I bet it tastes good. And we're going to come back with the salt later. We're going to put some bacon, salt, and pepper on it. But here's a very simple, very simple marinade that I really like. We're going to take some time, and you can either you can either leave this like this. You can run some of the leaves off in here kind of mash them up yeah. and get them going. That's gonna just soak Put your in there. time in there, just soak that in there. We're gonna take a little allspice. And I didn't measure this out, Mrs. Varma, but I'm assuming that's yeah. probably about three cups. Three cups of cider? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna put some allspice, quite a bit on there. Remember, this is a marinade. We want these flavors to sink in. If you'll cut me up some, up some shallots, All right. just roughly cut them up. You don't have to do anything fancy. While you're cutting up those shallots, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put three tablespoons in here. Mustard. And I'm gonna mix that up really, really good. Now remember, this is a marinade, so you want those flavors to be pretty stout. It's gonna start breaking that meat down, tenderizing that meat almost immediately. So just chop these up just enough to soak in there? Yeah, just enough to let the flavor out. All right. Bust them up a little bit. That's probably good right there, Mr. Remember. Scrape them up and pop them in. Now, I've got another recipe that we're doing just for us later on, but I'm gonna take a goodly portion of this. Now remember, we're gonna cut this up in pieces in a little right. while. Ooh, it's nice to have a sharp knife. Now, the, the thing about venison that's not mistakable is look at that red. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> it's perfect. It's lean, lean, lean. Now we're gonna plop that in there, and we're gonna put that in the fridge at least six to eight hours. You know, it's fall, mm -hmm. and I think people kind of 
overdo the pumpkin thing and they forget the... Squash, butternut squash. Well, butternut squash is the best. My parents used to put up butternut squash. We served it like potatoes even. Yeah. So we love squash. You made a little dish. I don't know if you'd call it a... It's almost like a pudding. I call it pudding. That's right. It's my butternut and squash you, pudding. You did put some little... <laughs> pumpkin spice yeah we did candy in it and we did it kind of chunky because we did it outside so I'm gonna let you, you get to that because this is delicious now this this needs a little set time too in the refrigerator right. and I've actually got about two cups here and I'm gonna do just enough for you and I to have each a cup of pudding how's All that right. so and I, I already have two cups there aren't these cute little squash those are cute All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more you don't want us to see us cutting three cups of them up All right and what we're gonna do is just take the peeling off the sides now this is something you could do inside in the oven at 425 for about 30, 35 minutes. We're gonna cut this into squares, and that's, I've got squares over there. And we're just gonna kind of roast this with olive oil to get it soft. We don't want it brown, but we just want them soft so that we can make them into a pudding. Now you could also do this in your 10 inch pan, right. which we have done, and you just need to be very careful. You can take the top off and look at them, make yeah. sure they're not burning, because you want that coloration to be pretty much the same all the way through. Right. You don't want to get a bunch of brown on And if it, it does, it's not terrible, but it's better if you can keep it all orange. All right, so now we're gonna take all these and we're gonna put those in your 10 inch pan that you got heated up. Put some olive oil, stir it around a little bit and let's let it get, let's let them get nice and tender so Good we can make go. them into pudding. We looked in our bag, Mrs. Farmer, and we found a head of cabbage. That's a nice And I cabbage. bought this one, bam! So I'm gonna go in half on that. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna core the bottom of it off. Okay. This is gonna be a colorful dish. Yes, it is. Okay, watch your hands. I'm watching. We only need two of us all gloved up. Ah. Now, later this week, we're gonna make cabbage soup. That'd be good. Do you know you can lose weight eating cabbage soup and eat about all of it you want? We've done that before, but oh, after yeah. about three or four days, I'm cabbage <laughs> soup. So. And it helps when you put a little meat in it. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Now, the rest of this, like I said, we're gonna make some cabbage soup next yeah. couple of nights because we dig it. We're just gonna cut these up just enough to toss them around the dish. Right. Mr. Farmer? You don't need these? I've gone ahead and got some. Let's save that for our cabbage for our soup. soup. All right, I'll put it away. Just enough. I've already melted some butter. Just enough to get it going. And if you'll chop that purple one up. I will do it. I want this to be colorful and beautiful and tasty. This is a little something different. Now I've already got my pan warm and I've melted my butter. Now look at the colors we have already. That's pretty. I like that. I always love cabbage. So we got a almost a half a stick of butter in there already. Okay. Now, yeah. if you'll take that pepper, Mrs. Farmer, okay. and just cut it into thin strips. Now, you see where we're going, Mrs. Farmer? I do. We already got the butter in there. What so, in cabbage yummy? and green pepper. And yummy. we got another surprise later. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. you'll grab that and set that on that fire over there. So how long did that go? That's about, probably, we probably let them go about 40 minutes there. And in the oven, you can do 425 for about 35 this minutes. This is absolutely a beautiful, wonderful little dish. So what's the next step? We are gonna now, usually people use a blender for all this, but I thought we'd get my little chopper out. And I'm gonna throw some candies that in there. That our, is our plastic cowboy chopper. It, it's, right. it's bona fide cowboy plastic chopper. That they, is. they got that from the plastic mines in Nevada. They used to have them. And late 1800s, I believe this model is. See these? I got a little bit of pumpkin candy. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this in a couple sections. And that's here. just pumpkin spice candy. Yeah, yes, I just we're, want guilty. To add some. we're guilty. We're guilty. And I figure, pumpkin spice. well, the pumpkins, this is this is warm. I mean, the squash is warm, so this might it's gonna help melt them up. Yeah. We're gonna add a little bit more. We've had more use out of this little. Yes, we have. It's the best ever. Plastic isn't it? cowboy chopper. bit left and this is just gonna make I just made enough for you and me to have I didn't make any for Kelly is that mean I just made two she can have a bite she'll of mine. share we'll share with Kelly if she behaves all right so we're done with this now what I'm gonna put in this I've got some heavy whipping cream here I'm gonna put about I'm gonna save a little of this but maybe about a quarter of a cup in here with this right now that'll work I'm gonna save this when we're done to check it I also have some maple syrup all right real maple syrup real maple syrup and I want to put about an eighth did you know you can make your own maple syrup? Yes, We've done can. it right here. It takes a whole lot of sap. And here I've got some uh, coconut oil. Right. And that's a, I'm gonna put about a teaspoon in there. 
And I'm just kind of guessing tonight. Kind of put in what you want. Mm -hmm. a little, about a teaspoon of vanilla. All right. I remember mom's having her vanilla sitting out when I was a kid. And I said, boy, that smells good. I said, can I have some? You try it. She said, it's, it's not good. And I'm like, she's just saying that. It's got to taste good. You tried so it, didn't you? Some. It's not good, is it? It smells better than it tastes. All right, it's about a half a teaspoon maybe. I've got some ginger here. I'm gonna throw in right. there and put it to your liking. I also have some nutmeg. Gotcha. A little nutmeg. And then I also have a little bit of cinnamon. And actually some salt. If you have a little salt for me over there. I got some salt. Let's put a little salt in there too. Show you when. Pretty good. It's good? Yep. I must chop all this up now. Isn't that work good? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? It does look pretty good. All if, right. you, if you did this in a blender, you could make it even smoother, but we're going to move it back into this bowl. While you're doing that, I'm going to sneak around here and stir this cabbage. All right. You just keep right on going. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit more cream. and You can put it the consistency you like. This is heavy whipping cream, which is so wonderful. And kind of, it's just almost like a pumpkin pie filling. We could put some whipped cream on this. I got pecans. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to stick this in the fridge. Well, I tried this last night. It's delicious. Let's decorate it with pecans. We could put whipped cream on there. Now, we could, oh, eat, yeah. this. We could eat it warm, but we put, says put it in the fridge. Chill it a while. Yeah, chill it and eat it tomorrow. Let me get the stuff out of your hair. All right, let's take that to the fridge. All right. The cowboy fridge, of course. That's right, the cowboy fridge. And then we'll go from there. Now, I'm going to take just a little bit of chicken broth. Put in here just a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit of liquid. And then, Mrs. Farmer, I've mm -hmm. had my cream cheese sitting back here. Okay. Keeping it room temperature, I'm gonna take almost half of it. Wow, I love cream cheese. <laughs> i tell you what, if you wanna cut that in two, three pieces for me. Okay. I'll just plop it in here. Here's one, we put it in. All right. And if you've never had this, oh my. It's absolutely wonderful. This is enough, just enough for you and I. All right, so we're going to let that get all acquainted in there. Mrs. Farmer, I'll tell you one more little piece of okay. cream cheese, and we're going to set that back on the fire, and then we're going to get our venison started, because we're, we're getting close. All right, so let's see what has happened to our venison. Remember how bright red it was a little mm -hmm. while ago? Now, this is a smaller section. Mm -hmm. It's been set in a while. Look at that. Looks nice. See, that Soaked you can tell in. that it's... Tenderize that mm -hmm. meat. Look at the end of it. Yeah. All right. So, what we're gonna do now? If you notice, this is a little different shape piece than we had earlier. This has been setting for the whole time, Mrs. Farmer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a piece about just enough, big enough, to wrap a piece of bacon around. Oh, yummy. Now, see that goes about an eighth of an inch into that. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is I want to salt and pepper the front and back ends of this. Okay. Then we're going to take a piece of bacon, Miss Farmer, if you want to, and just roll Wrap it up it. that way. That'll do it. See how be oh, that's going to be you lovely. You know what I'm talking about? That's going to be lovely. <laughs> now I'm going to salt and pepper. Put one on both sides for you. That's already got a beautiful, wonderful Over flavor here. from that marinade. And I'm not much on marinade. Now, when I do a marinade, generally it's a red wine marinade. I'm going to change it up a little bit. We don't want to do the same thing every day. You don't want to get tired of something to the point. You just don't want to eat it anymore. All right, there's so one. So let's get, uh, let's get. A couple more. I'm gonna, I could eat a couple, couple of more. these. Okay. I could eat two. Just big enough to put a piece of bacon on. All right, very simply, listen for the sizzle. Yummy. Oh my. Wow. Do you smell that already? I do. <laughs> And while it's cooking, Mr. Farmer, remember we had that long spell without any rain? Mm -hmm. Me and the boys were out in the desert. We couldn't find anything to drink. All we wanted, all we wanted is me and Scotty and Bobby and Mike. All we wanted was cool water. Okay. the barren waste without the taste of water, cool water. Old Dan and I with throats burnt dry and souls that cry for water. The 
nights are cool and I'm a fool. He stars a pool of water. Cool water. But with the dawn I'll wake and yawn and carry on to water. Keep a moving then, don't you listen to him then He's a devil, not a man And he spreads the burning sands with water Oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree Where the water's running free And it's waiting there for you and me Water The shadows sway and seem to say, tonight we pray for water, cool water. And way up there he'll hear our prayer and show us where there's water. Keep a moving then, don't you listen to him then He's a devil, not a man Then he spreads the burning sand with water Oh, Dan, can you see that big green tree Where the water's running free And he's waiting there for you and me Water Now, one thing that you uh, did there, Mrs. Farm, was take the uh, toothpick. Toothpicks out. Important. It's important. That's right. Got a couple of pieces here. Now, that's a little bit rare on the inside, the way we Ooh, like I it. I like it. Ready? That looks quite beautiful. Go ahead. Oh, oh wow. Delicious. Mm -hmm. That's pretty darn good. I like it. Mm, it's Very good. Mm. Now, this cabbage may not look like much, but oh my goodness. Oh man. I like that. The peppers? Sweet and peppery. That's really good. I knew you'd like that. You it's pretty. I like the colors. It is pretty. I know I'm at a turn here. The whole mom doesn't watch this. You had a little bit of you had She's gonna be mad at me getting my eat my dessert before dinner's done. Hmm. Hmm. I'm ready for the holidays when I eat something like that. That's like a really, really good pumpkin pie without the crust. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> delicious. Wow, that's really good. It's fall. And if that's not a fall dish, I don't know what is. That's delicious. We got venison from straight up on the hill, mm -hmm. butternut squash. We got cabbage, peppers. It's Delicious. a beautiful dish. It beautiful is a beautiful dish. dish. Good job. Now, Mrs. Farmer, if you were looking for other dishes that you may have never tried before, where would you go? I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We have gazillions yes, <laughs> of recipes on there and how to's. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, hit the little red button, subscribe. That way, if something new comes up, you'll be the first to know. That's right. And our Facebook page is ever growing. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult to get on our Facebook page. That's How would right. you do that, Ms. You Farmer? hit like. Boom. Like. It's that easy. And we want to talk to folks more. If you have a question, feel free to ask it. Now, before this food gets cold, Mrs. Farmer, we should probably just dive into it. But I first, it. remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.